Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Apubarama, and in today's video, we are going to be reviewing this average-looking sedan, the Shafter V12 Armored. This vehicle in front of you may look pretty lame, at least right now, but when we're fully done upgrading this car and I'm done showcasing you the strengths and capabilities this vehicle has in today's video, it might just change your mind and showcase why this is one of the best vehicles to purchase in Grand Theft Auto Online. Just on my Broke to Millions accounts alone, which we're currently on, I own five of these vehicles in my Eclipse Boulevard garage. And it's for a pretty simple reason. This car can do everything and anything you need it to. First of all, it's fast. It features a top speed of 123.5 miles per hour. That's because of the massive Mercedes V12 this vehicle does carry. Not only does it feature great top speed, but it's also got a great lap time of 1 minute 5 seconds for a sedan. That's really, really dang impressive. And, as I said, it is an armored vehicle. And it's not expensive, it comes in at a price tag of $325,000. Which is why a lot of people probably overlook this car. They look at it and they just see, wow, this is a super cheap vehicle, why would I ever purchase this when there's a Monty Tech Cars and other big options? Well, let's first of all upgrade this vehicle and see what options it's got going for it. It's got a couple bumpers, but honestly, just the last aero bumper is the best one. You also got a rear diffuser you can put on the back, which is decent. We're gonna upgrade that engine to max and we got some exhaust we can do honestly i love the titanium exhaust i think the blue just looks really sick so i always go for titanium exhaust you do have some carbon hoods you can put on i personally just like the normal vented hoods we're gonna do a xenon lights and make our way over to respray now Picking what color you want to make uh, Mercedes is pretty simple. I usually like going for a metal, so I like to go to metals option, and brushed steel is usually the one I go for. Brushed aluminum is pretty good as well. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go for... Let's... Mm, actually, I like brushed black steel. That's what we're going to go for. So, secondary color, obviously, we're going to do the same thing. Go back to metals, brushed black steel, and there you go. Our Mercedes is kind of like a chrome, but I feel like this is what Mercedes look like in real life when you see them down the street. Kind of like a silver metallic. Uh, interior, you got to make it red. When it's a Mercedes, you always got to do red, although I'm pretty sure we went past that already. Uh, can we do, like, a leather interior? Yeah, that's pretty good. Garnet red looks pretty close. And just like that, the vehicle is almost done. Now, you can make the roof carbon, or you can stick with your normal silver. Honestly, I I don't know. Carbon looks pretty dang nice. We're going to go for a carbon roof, and skirts we're obviously going to make carbon as well. Let's put a spoiler on the back. You got two spoiler options. You got a high-level spoiler, a lip spoiler. I guess there's three, and you also got the carbon wing. I'm personally a big fan of the high-level spoiler out of the three options. It doesn't have crazy upgradability, but it's not the worst. Let's do turbo, all the transmission upgrades. Wheel type. For a vehicle like this, you got two major options you can do. You're going to do either off-road, which I think are pretty good, or just go for high-end. I'm personally going to stick with our high-end rims, even though I do have a couple versions of this vehicle with off-road tires if I ever do want to go off-roading. All right, and just like that, our vehicle is basically done. We've got our limo tints, and just like that, I think this car looks really, really nice. You can see how you can turn what looks like quite an average just sedan into, in my opinion, an incredibly nice looking high end sports car. And it sounds absolutely amazing. If I turn up the game volume, I mean, you can hear that engine purr. It is a powerful engine. And that's because, as it says in the title, this thing features a V12 engine, which is pretty dang impressive. You'll also notice, just from stepping on the gas here, this car's got a lot of speed, and it also handles pretty dang well. So, overall, the Shafter V12 Armored is an incredibly nice car to upgrade. It's got some decent options for how old the vehicle is and, honestly, how cheap the price tag is. But now let's break into some of the major reasons why you would want to use this vehicle, starting off with the armor. Now, I'm not going to say this is the most armored vehicle in the game, because it's not, but let's first of all start off with the glass. It is semi-bulletproof glass. That means if you're in a free mode session and there's somebody that doesn't like you, they are not going to be able to cut through this glass unless they shoot at it a lot. Even if they're using a uh, weapon like an assault shotgun, you can see it takes quite a bit of blast to go through. One, two, three, four, five. 
five, six, seven, eight. Eight shots from an assault shotgun. That's a lot of shooting, and you're not really going to kill somebody like that. So because of this, I find the Shafter V12 to do a great job at dealing with any quick people you just want to drive by and you don't want to worry about being blown up with. Not only does the Shafter V12 feature pretty solid bulletproof protection all the way around the vehicle, but it also can survive one explosion while you're inside of it, which is actually really, really nice. So we could very easily showcase this if I just throw a grenade outside of it. Well, hopefully we can showcase this. There you go. We did not get blown up. Now, if you do use another grenade, it will blow up the car. So do keep that in mind. This is not like an Amani Tech vehicle. You will completely get blown up if you try to survive any more explosions. But you can still see the vehicle has decent bulletproof protection and it can survive a missile, which is great, especially for a vehicle this cheap. To showcase just how good the Shafter V12 armored is on maneuverability, top speed, and overall handling, we're going to be comparing it to the Ocelot Pariah. Now the Pariah is one of the fastest sports cars available in the game. It even stands a pretty good test against the HSW vehicles, which is really, really impressive. The Praia is just all speed. It has decent handling, to be honest, but you're not buying the Praia for handling. You're buying it to get that overall speed and acceleration. So I'm pretty sure that we are going to be able to beat the Shafter V12 when it comes to speed and probably when it comes to the overall lap, but I still wanted to showcase just how actually good the car is. Like, people don't realize how good some of these old cars are in the game. Now, unfortunately, the Praia kind of spun out there a bit, but there's not much I can do about that. The car definitely has some grip issues when you're trying to go as fast as possible uphill, especially when rolling around corners, but it shouldn't matter all too much. We're at 100 and probably 20-ish miles per hour at this point. You can't really get to the full extent of the uh, Pariah's top speed on these cornering tracks because of the fact that there are so much corners, but the Praia is still able to use its great acceleration here. You can see the car handles pretty well still, so let's keep on going, roll around this corner here. All right, not too bad. We're at about a minute and 20 seconds on the clock, and we got a mile to go, which is not too bad at all. This is probably going to be a new PB for following this track normally, but that makes sense. The Praia is an incredibly ridiculous car. All right, let's keep on going. Roll around this corner. All right, hug it tight. Nice. So we're at a minute and 34 seconds right now. And as we can see, the timer is blaring at me that I'm not going to be able to beat it. Now, again, a little bit of a crash there, but we'll just subtract probably two seconds off my time. I think is a fair adjustment for the slight mishaps I had in this little bit of a track. And then we'll compare it to how I do in the Shafter V12. So let's roll around this corner here. Ooh, ah, okay, all good. We're at two minutes on the clock right now, and we're almost around the corner. Keep on going, keep on going. Almost there, almost there. And... Uh, done. So we'll say about two minutes, five seconds. I think that's a fair assessment if I hadn't messed up as much. So two minutes and five seconds is what we have for the Praia. Let's go try it in the Shafter V12. Speed is key. Let's see just how much speed this car has though, shall we? Now you'll notice that overall acceleration wise, the Shafter V12 is really, really dang fast. You have to be a little careful because it will lose grip. This is a very long vehicle and because of that, yeah, when rolling around corners, it can be going a little bit too fast for comfort, but that does make sense. It's a big, heavy Mercedes. It's a freaking tank. But as you'll notice, the car is no slouch. We are easily going uphill, probably close to 120 miles per hour which, albeit probably not as fast as the Praia, but still, not bad at all. Cornering, yeah, it's a bit sketchy on some corners, but as long as you understand how to wield this beast, as you can see, it drifts pretty well into the corners. So let's keep on going here, holding it tight, 90, 100 miles per hour, probably somewhere around there, full speed ahead. I like to gain a lot of speed through this area here, but let's start to slow down a bit just so we don't crash. Ooh, okay, all good. Now we just gotta roll around this corner and, ooh, I always am scared I'm gonna hit that sign there because when you do hit that, it actually slows you down quite a bit. Now, here's a pretty good example of the cornering capabilities of the Shafter V12. You can see that, yeah, I gotta apply the brakes a little bit, but completely fine. It's not really any problem with cornering. I can tell you for a fact that if you use Arena War vehicles or anything that's armored, even a Monitech vehicles, they are not going to corner this well. The only vehicle that might decently compete against the Shafter V12 armored is the Dubachi Champion, which isn't a Monitech vehicle. But, I mean, you can see we are keeping up with the Shafter, or not the Shafter, we are keeping up with the Pariah. Yes, the Shafter V12 is keeping up with the Shafter V12. Who could have guessed that? But right now we have just equaled out the time 
time, so we're at about a minute and 50 seconds, and as we said, we were going to shave about two seconds off the Pariah's overall time. We actually haven't crashed at all with the Shafter yet, so we're doing pretty good. Let's just roll around this corner here, although, well, I guess we did crash. All right, I guess we'll shave off two seconds for this car as well. So, in the end, we'll just see how the times do compare. But here we are, let's just roll around here. Ooh, got to put on the brakes, and there you go. 2 minutes 10 seconds. So what you just saw was about a 3 second difference between the Pariah and the Shafter V12 Armored. Again, this is a sedan. It's not even in the sports class. And with a pretty decent lap that I was able to perform there, we did the same almost as one of the fastest sports cars in the game. Now to be fair, the Pariah is not the best on lap time, nor does it feature the best handling out there. But it's still a pretty impressive shout to realize just how impressive what we just accomplished is with such an old vehicle. There are definitely going to be people that come into the comments section and try to argue why would I ever drive the Shafter V12 when I can own a vehicle like the Dubachi Champion, which can not only have the same bulletproof glass, but also survive multiple explosions and have the ability to not be locked on by missiles at all. And there's one very simple reason. Well, actually two. First of all, a vehicle like the Dubachi Champion is not a four-seater. And yes, you could argue the Buffalo STX, but then you're not going to be getting the performance. The Shafter V12 does not suffer performance as an armored vehicle. Not only does it not suffer performance, but it also does not suffer on the price tag. To get your hands on the Champion, you need to own an agency. Now that's not really a downside, because I would always suggest to buy an agency. But then you're going to want to purchase this vehicle. It's going to cost you... 2.8 million dollars to purchase a Dubachi Champion. That's not even adding on the Imani Tech upgrades. Adding on all the armor upgrades and everything like that, you're probably going to be looking close to 3.5 to maybe 3.8 million dollars to fully upgrade a Champion. Yeah, 3.8, 3.5 million dollars when a single Shafter V12 is $325,000. That means even if we add on the $200,000 upgrade prices for the vehicle, the vehicle is still going to be about four or five times cheaper than just the base price of the Champion, let alone the upgrades. So what that means is that you could very, very easily purchase about six, seven, maybe even eight Shafter V12 armors, upgrade all of them, and store them in your garage for about the same price as a single Dubachi Champion. And that's exactly what I've done. As I said, I own five of these on my Broke to Billions account for one very simple reason. If one gets blown up, Simple. I just go back onto my phone and call the next one out. It takes about half a second. I never have to call MMI until all five are blown up. And as I said, they always get me through the tough spots in life. So at the end of the day, I really, really like the Shafter V12. It's a fast car. It looks really nice. And it is incredibly underrated for not only the price tag, but what the vehicle is. There are still going to be people that try to complain in the comment section that, Oh, this video is a waste. I already have so much money. And I don't know why you'd be watching this video to begin with if you have unlimited money in the game. You're just kind of a Debbie Downer. So, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.